If you're looking to buy a new delay pedal for you or your mom, the choices are overwhelming. So today I'm gonna break down the different types, where they came from and show you what they sound like. That way you can sleep at night, you can rest, your blood pressure will go down and you'll just be a happier person. We have covered some different delay style episodes in the past, mainly historical. One is called Origins of Delay, and another one is Ultimate Tape Echo History. You can go check those out, and you should, but let's start here and basically get into the six very important main types of delay that you're gonna need to weed through to figure out what you want for your sound. So first up is the tape delay. This comes basically from the 1950s through the 60s and 70s where you use an actual magnetic tape. It crosses a record head, jumps onto a playhead, and you can move that time around mechanically. And there's a lot of great effects pedals that replicate this. Now this sound is my absolute favorite delay sound. It's very flat. It is dull in a nice way that fits in musically with bigger ambient sounds in my opinion. And a lot of people prefer it and it's probably most used for slapback, rockabilly, country, things like that. But it's wild how it spans a lot of genre because it's really versatile. And in pedal form, you can get some really long times with it uh, that the tape units didn't necessarily have. This is called the Echoplex. This is made by Dunlop. Um, it's a great unit. We have the Milkman, which has a slapback tape style echo. Uh, Keely just released the Echoes, but today I'm going to play probably one of the best tape delay pedals ever made. It is the El Capistan by Strymon. Really awesome. And I'm going to use it long, really long time, kind of ambient. And one of the things about a tape delay is it has mechanical parts. So as the tape moves through the wheels and all these things, they age and it actually causes what's called flutter. You could also call that modulation. And this has a control to simulate that. And so that's gonna be the effect of every repeat kind of moves and has a chorusy vibrato sound. It's really nice and check it out. evolutions of delay past tape was the analog bucket brigade delay. Now the very first units were things like this, the Electro Harmonics Memory Man Solid State Echo. And this uses what's called a Reticon chipset in it. And then you move on to a Panasonic uh, bucket brigade chip, which is widely known and still very, very popular. Uh, there's a lot of vintage forms of the Memory Man, there's newer ones, but companies like Boss in the early 80s put out the DM2. Now you can actually see two different DM2s. This one's from 81 and 83, and they have different bucket brigade chipsets. You'd never know unless you open them up. And there are slight little differences in those sounds, but it's not a big deal. They all sound basically the same and they sound really good. And the distinguishing factors of a bucket brigade style delay for you to know is that every repeat gets worse, but in a really nice way. So imagine you yell into a canyon, you hear your voice repeating, and it becomes more lo-fi every time you hear your voice repeat. So that's what a Bucket Brigade does. Now the vintage ones, they're pretty short delay times. You get around 400 milliseconds if you're lucky. People like me, there's Diamond, lots of other companies expanded on Bucket Brigade, put multiple chips, you can get a second of time in our cub delay. But I'm gonna play probably the most popular, uh, best-selling modern Bucket Brigade delay ever, the MXR Carbon Copy. So let's check it out. Notice the repeats. they. They kind of degrade as you go along, really beautiful, and you would call this a warm sounding delay.
In the late 1970s and early 80s, digital delays came to be a product that everyone wanted, mainly through rack effects. So these 19-inch rack units, you'd see a guitarist pull in their Marshall stack, their big cabinets full of effects. And the popular units were things like the Roland SDE delays. Now, in those early 80s as well, around 82, 83, Boss releases the first ever compact digital delay in the DD2, and it's fantastic. And then we see a lot of other companies carry on the digital thing. Ibanez has the DDL, this is one of my favorites. And more modern times, Strymon has the Dig, it's fantastic. And it's pink, it's pink. It's always gonna be good if it's pink. And then I'm gonna play the new DD3T, so it has tap tempo. Um, the DD3 is really classic from the 80s as well, but this is the newer version. And the thing about digital that's important is it's basically taking your signal, turning it into ones and zeros, and just computing it right back out. It's a computer, it's DSP, digital signal processing, and that's really fantastic because it'll give you exactly what you put in for the repeat. So with analog, it degrades every repeat. With digital, you can have 10 repeats exactly the volume, exact clarity that you put in, and that's awesome. I think of bands like U2, so, you know, good rhythmic things, time-based delays, really clear and crisp. Let's check it out. That you've definitely heard and maybe you're trying to figure out what it is is the effect called shimmer or octave delay so in those rack mount years that madness of the 80s guys like Brian Eno and other famous producers would combine delay units with pitch shifting and give the repeats of the delays or echoes octave ups intervals all kinds of wild stuff and it's really really great but nowadays we have a lot of pedals especially multi delays that have this setting in it. So I'm gonna play the Electroharmonics Canyon, I'm gonna put it on the octave setting, and you're just gonna hear the repeat be pitch shifted up. This is really, really fantastic if you're the only guitar player and you're wanting to create bigger textures and pads and ambience. I really love it. Or it just makes your lead line sound cool, like maybe you have a whammy pedal with the toe down, it really cuts through. So I'm gonna play some kind of nightmare children's rhyme with it. Nightmare children's rhyme! Um, because that's what this pedal deserves. The next very important form of delay is called reverse delay. Now the origins of this come from the 1950s and 60s when people took their actual tape delay recording units or tape delay units and they played back whatever was recorded in reverse. It's very psychedelic. It's in albums like the Beatles White Album, Sgt. Pepper's. My favorite example is probably the solo on Jimi Hendrix Red House. It's awesome. And I first heard this effect in a pedal uh, in the Boss DD5. And then the back talk by Dan Electro. I had this on my board for years and years. And then as you know from the Who is Dan Electro episode, they reissued this, so I'm gonna play it. Now to get in the mood for this riff, I'm gonna go uh, drink some acid. Uh, take, what do you do? Do you drink acid? You don't, you don't do it. Don't. I'm gonna not do acid for this riff.
next up is the catch-all category of multi-delay effects. So these are units that have pretty much any sound I played here. They're usually always digital and they replicate these classic sounds or modern sounds with DSP code and a lot of functionality. Now, sometimes these can be overwhelming. I use one of these on my smaller board, but I really do prefer single pedals. But I'm gonna show you my favorite multis because they got all the sounds and they have some crazy stuff. Now the most legendary to me is the Line 6 DL4. This thing turned 20 years old last October. It has so many killer sounds and it replicates all this stuff going on. It has a looper in it as well. And another thing to know about delay is essentially it's a short term looper. Or you could say that something like a ditto looper is actually just a delay that goes as long as you want turns off, you get the idea. It's a computer that records music. Now, this is a great unit, and I gotta talk about the new, the Boss DD200, the old Giga Delay is great. These just have so many fantastic sounds, and this is a really small usable footprint. Um, legendary Flashback by TC, you just turn this control and you get all kinds of cool sounds. But I'm gonna demonstrate the Source Audio Nemesis Delay, and I'm only gonna play the stuff that's kind of odd. I'm not gonna play the settings for analog, tape, digital, you get it. I'm gonna play things that we didn't already show. I'm just gonna turn the controls, let you experience a little bit of chaos and beauty at the same time, and this might be the kind of thing that some of you need to learn what you actually like in your rig. Here we go. Today's record time is brought to you by 1988's Rattle and Hum by U2. It is a live record and it displays the Edge's mastery of the effect of delay. I think a band like U2 would have a hard time existing without this effect and that's why I want to showcase it. A really fun and awesome example of how the delay makes a guitar part come to life and sound massive is on a track that's only on this record. Um, it is called Silver and Gold and it's awesome. Bono says play the blues and the Edge plays something very different than the blues but it's possibly my favorite Edge solo on any record. So check it out. Let me know in the comments below what you think about this and particularly that guitar solo. And then just list your favorite delay songs out there. Guitar parts where the delay stands out, where it's important and where the guitar would not fit the song or even feel like it mattered unless the effect is on there. Go for it. Thanks for watching this episode. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope that it helped clarify some confusion you might have about what type of delay you might want. My biggest advice and takeaway is like I said at the end, you might want to grab one of these multi-effect delays. That way you can try different styles and different textures with your rig, with your band and the music that you're creating. So like this episode if you liked it, subscribe to the channel and click the bell notification to get notifications of all the future episodes. There's a Patreon. You can join and be a patron of the show and support some of the history that we're archiving. All that information's over there and exclusive videos, giveaways, and all kinds of other content. And thejhsshow.com. You can go buy shirts, posters, and other fun things. Until next time, have a wonderful day.